Welcome to War Gaming Recon. I am your host, Jonathan J. Reinhardt. War Gaming Recon is the only member of the TSR Podcast Network to discuss historical and New England gaming. This is episode 190. Jeez, 190. Open Gaming Convention 2017. So I want to welcome all of you new and longtime listeners alike because you're in for a treat. So before I go any further, I want to let you know that we will be talking about a lot of different things in this episode. We don't expect you to remember them all, but don't worry. We got you covered with the show notes at wargamingrecon.com slash WR190. That's wargamingrecon.com slash WR190. So as I said, we're going to be talking about the Open Gaming Convention and to help us with this conversation and we're going to talk about a lot of other things too in this episode but to kind of help us dive in and really get the feel for things i'm joined by the one and only my buddy mr mike Payne, as co-host mike how are you i'm good jonathan so well before we were recording you were talking about being a little low energy right you had a really long day at work and just kind of sapped you huh yeah yeah it was uh at least it wasn't as that hot. That was a good thing. It was, it was long. Well, it, it's rough because you work outside and I don't. <laughs> I have a very good <laughs> job, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I feel, feel for bad you. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it must be nice to be outside. But when it's so hot, I, I don't know how you do it. So really. I, it. I, I have to pay the bills. That's how. My hat's off to you, sir. Uh, well, it's, not, it's not as bad as I make it sound, I hope. No, I think you should play it up because hey, why not? <laughs> let's let's forget about that stuff. Let's talk about <laughs> so we were talking about things that we wanted to discuss on the show, and of course, we're going to talk about the open gaming convention, and we'll do that a little bit later in the episode. But we wanted to t- start off with a few other things that we think might be of interest, and one of them is some of the stuff that we've been doing recently in the hobby, some of our recent wargaming and all that kind of stuff. So, Mike, I know you've been doing a lot of prep for conventions, and you're probably going to laugh, but uh, what sort of gaming stuff have you been doing lately? Gaming stuff? Yeah, any, have you been, been doing any modeling? or? Uh, well, yeah, well, I, got, I got a, a bench loaded with all kinds of projects that are not getting done. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm like 10 feet away from all that stuff. Well, what do you have queued up? Well, I have uh, I have a, a, a wargaming recon soccer stadium that I haven't touched in weeks. <laughs> for one thing, you know, every time I go in the carriage house, there it is, waiting for me to do something. It's just mocking you. Yeah, I, I've got it. Assi- it's assembled, but it's the uh, you know painting. You know, I got in my mind. I think what I want to do, but I just find the time to do it and actually get out there and do it. But uh, I'll get it done eventually. You should take some photos. Like in the in the hobby room itself, I got the uh, the army of uh, Grand Fenwick partly painted started. Ooh. The, and I have uh, a slew of Chinese and Japanese I want to do for. Some Burma stuff I want to do in, in Hang High and things like that. Does that mean you would be expanding the amount of table space you would need for Hang High, or, or would no. you swap these in and in and out? Um, it, it's not really thought out yet, but I think what I'm I'm planning on doing is uh, building a a big jungle and doing some stuff in Burma. And then if I want to do something in China, I'll probably fool around with a hang high setup and do something with that that sounds pretty cool yeah and i uh i may be collaborating with uh jim dermaya soon he's been putting out some great pulp alley stuff he's gonna he runs pulp alley and uh you know i'm not gonna do that but i let him do it on my table and i'm hoping we can gang up and use some of his stuff on my table because oh man you where do you see the stuff he's putting out that would be pretty cool yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of excited about that. He uh, he he reminded me that I, the one of the reasons I'm doing pulp is some of the pulp games that he ran in the past were really great. I had so, so much fun playing them, and uh, that really 
uh, he was calling it the genesis of Hang High, and I can't disagree. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I thought about it like that at the time, but it's true. Well, I think we all owe him a debt of um, gratitude because Hang yeah. High is a lot of fun to play. Yeah, I was always, I was already doing, you know, Asian stuff, Fox Rebellion, and et cetera. But then when I started playing his gangster games, it was like, oh, this is just cool and stuff. Let's, uh, let's, let's see what we can go with it, you know? And, uh, <laughs> took, took me over. I have, the Nautil, I have the Nautilus in there that's half built. I've only been working on that for over 10 years. I built a periscope and I used that for the Nautilus in the game. So I got a feeling that thing's not getting off the bench at all. <laughs> it's like half done. And I mean, literally half. One whole half is all modeled and the other half needs hours of work. And I just don't feel like doing it. Well, you know, if you cut it in half horizontally, you can just put it on top of the table. And Well, yeah, I could do that. Because, <laughs> I mean, like, it would be submerged, right? Well. Or partially submerged? No, uh, uh, I don't know. No? I don't think about it. Uh, I don't know. I am thinking about it, and uh, that's not working for me. <laughs> okay. I'd really like to complete it. I just, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't got the motivation. I have this great flying ship that uh, has been sitting there almost as long. And I'm already thinking about making a, starting another one from scratch without even touching that one. I think you I just need this. a goal. You need to uh, be told like you have a game or something that you need to have the Nautilus and you need to have multiple flying ships at. And then you well, that, get them done. Well, that was the original idea. But uh, then I came up with the idea of building a periscope so I could just not have to do that. <laughs> and that's kind of how Hang High's been going too. I have uh, when I first started doing it, I had like little cards with information for each character. And uh, after a while, people would repeat playing, and they they knew what was going on because they had played so much. So those have been uh, in mothballs for a while, and I've been doing it a little different than the. Uh, because I haven't had the time to, well, to just. You should give yourself some credit now and, and go easy on yourself. I think you've hit a critical mass where you have so much stuff for Hang High and you have a following that you are being pushed to always keep it fresh and different. And that takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of um, material and skill and supplies and it just it takes a lot out of you. Yeah, well, it, it, you know, I, I like I like the being pushed out of it though. I don't want I don't want it to be the same. It won't be as much fun for me either. No, no. But uh, yes. some some of the players come up with some great stuff. I had uh, this young kid Ben. He's been playing since in, the, in this game since he was four, and uh, he just he came up with this. I, I have this thing. Uh, uh, Joe Cavallo gave me this thing. I don't even know what it is. It's, it looks kind of like some kind of a Sphinx, but fancier. And uh, Ben decides that's, I, you know, I have all these uh, artifacts, and one of them is called the Menacing Shadow. So Ben decides that is the Menacing Shadow. So now that that thing is the Menacing Shadow. When that card comes up, you get control of it. And it's almost like having control of the dragon when we, when we, run, when we run the Hang High Dragon around. Yeah, so, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, so Ben was kicking some butt with that for a while until it got killed. So I know someone who's not played Hang High who really needs to, and he's here with us right now, our friend and co-host, Mr. Alex Kostopoulos. Alex, how are you? Hi, how's it going? Can you hear me all right? We can, of course, hear you, because you have Hi, that Alex. fantastic radio voice. <laughs> you see a lot of fan yeah, yeah, Alex, Ladies Alex and gentlemen. Alex needs to play. Everybody needs to play. <laughs> I, I definitely do want to, um, and I had my opportunity. I blew my opportunity at, at Havoc this year. Because I totally left, did. I left with you guys. I should have just stayed. But it was stay. it was snowing uh, cats and dogs at that time. I tell you. Yeah. Well, that that was that was tough. That was a tough one. I uh, I was worried that nobody was going to show up the way the weather started. Though. You know when you could play Hang High next, though, Alex. You could play it at the Hobby Bunker Game Day end of August. Right. That's mini Hang High while we run it. That's okay. It's a good introduction, yeah. though. It's just yeah, mini well, hang high. It's just mini hang high, though. I mean, you know. That's right. But it's <laughs> easy. It's close. Can I go there go home? Standard I mean, size table. Mike will be there running it. It's going to be fantastic. Adrian and I will be at 
uh, the Hobby Bunker game day. We're going to be doing a live recording of Wargaming Recon. You two could come, and then you'd be able to play and hang high. We're going to play and stuff too, and it'd be fun. I, I maybe we'll see. We'll see. I can't. You know me. I can't. I can't make any commitments to anything ever. You are about making commitments the way I am about painting anything. <laughs> it's a little far off too. So. End of August. End of, end of August. That's no. I he just. He, I have. I have no excuse. I'm just a bad planner. I am your wargaming wife because I nag you. It, it you is know, true. That's sexist. I take that back. But it, it, I, I nag you is what it is. It significant. Is. You're my wargaming significant other. Yeah. Non-gender specific. <laughs> I'm well, a little frustrated because I can't get my camera to work. Somebody made me buy this camera. The and, jerk. Uh, and it does work because I've tested it with you. Uh, or at least I've tested it. Maybe not with you. Um, but for some reason it doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do. Is there an on switch? Do I have to yell at it? So what you do is you plug it into your computer, which I did. It sees it through the USB port. Did and that. then when you are in your, for listeners who don't know, we record these via live via YouTube hangout. So near the top of the hangout window, you're going to see some little icons. If you move your cursor up there. Yeah. Yeah. I got that. I, I, I'm there. I'm in the and settings and, and it says, settings cam and it says camera problem. Hangouts can't use selected camera without a working camera. The other participants won't be able to see you. Well, it could be your port is my guess. You might have to put it into a different USB port, which is unfortunate because you joined us and I, I looked and I was like, Oh, Alex is here. And then I was like, wait, I see those archers from the no Disney Robin Hood again, which I love, but I was like, wait, that's not him. All right. I will humor you and try a different port. Please do. And, and while you're doing that, um, I've been very weird lately because I've actually lately. been doing a lot of gaming. And <laughs> so recently, well, lucky you. I know it like, I don't know what it is, but I just, I don't get up to game, but that's not true lately. So I, I'm going to have to, I don't normally get out to game, but lately I've been doing tons of gaming stuff. So was at Battleground Games and Hobbies in Norton, Mass, playing the Axis and Allies World War One game called 1914. It is oh, so good. I think you posted a picture of that. Yeah, I was thinking about getting that. It's expensive though. It's like a hundred bucks for the game. Yeah. Well, that's why I don't have it. <laughs> and then um, a common complaint with it is that they don't give you enough of the the little people. So and, and this actually really bleeped me over the first round. So I was playing it with Adrian and then two friends of ours, uh, Carrie and John, and it's actually John's copy of the game. But no, Carrie wasn't there, I'm sorry, uh, with John and with Rick. And Rick also has a copy of the game and bring it. And so we, for a four player game, they tell you how to divide it up, who gets what, because there's a lot of nations involved. So you have the central powers, you have the allied powers. And I, of course, ended up being on the central powers I played as Germany, which seemed appropriate. And Adrian was on the Allied Powers, so he got Italy and Russia. Uh, John was on the Allied Powers. He got the US, France, and Britain. I'm missing someone, aren't I? Um, and then... Um, sure. Oh, yeah, the Ottomans. And so then the Ottomans, uh, for the Central Powers, Rick got them, and he got Austria-Hungary. Oh, yeah. I, I might be missing someone, but I, I think I got everyone. Sounds like you got most of them. So, uh, you know, you set up the board as you do for any access and ally game, and you run out of infantry people in particular. So as Germany, I have all my infantry people out, and then your first turn comes, and it's the familiar routine for the uh, play phase where you um, use your IPCs, your money, to buy reinforcements and things. And I was like, I want to buy infantry because I knew you need a lot of infantry in the game, but there were no infantry tokens because they were all used up. So I couldn't buy infantry. So the only way to get infantry was I had to move my armies on the board to consolidate them or to have some of them die so that I'd then be able to buy infantry. And I was like, this is ridiculous. This should be enough pieces. So you can at least buy some reinforcements. So I had to buy other stuff and I, I, I did some stupid stuff because I wanted to try different tactics, uh, which didn't work out well. But like, I was really annoyed in the beginning because I was like, if I had infantry, I would have reinforced myself with more armies and then been able to kind of hold my perimeter and then do some advances and stuff. Uh, so I, I was annoyed by that. But the game plays really well. And it has this neat mechanic that I just love. And we should probably do like an actual review of it or maybe some um, live play video of it. 
And the mechanic is, of course, with World War One, you have to try to uh, represent trench warfare, which is hard because how are you going to do that in a board game like this? So they do a really neat thing when you attack another territory, uh, and you do that by you know you move forces in there. As soon as you move your forces into the occupied territory, you immediately fight one round of combat, and you do that. And if you wipe out all the defenders, great, you get it. But if not, your troops stay in that territory. So whatever's left, they just stay there. And then you don't do any more combat until someone else moves more troops into that territory. So the defender could then choose to uh, reinforce uh, them. The attacker could bring more reinforcements in. And then once you think you have um, enough, you can then do an attack. So you as defender, you could be like, I'm going to move more troops in, but we're not going to do combat. We're just moving troops in to reinforce until you feel like you have reached the tipping point, and then you surge out and cross no man's land and try to repel the Hun in hope of uh, saving dear old France. And uh, so it's just, it's really neat. You get that attrition going on um, because you do that first push and then you don't know what's going to happen. And nine times out of 10, you're not going to take the territory. Yeah, you know, I can see why you would want more infantry. Yeah, and I you don't get, um, to try to represent the technological advances, you don't get tanks until I think it's turn four or five, something like that. You can get planes right away. You get uh, infantry and artillery right away. You can get battleships, uh, cruisers, transports, things of that sort right away. But you don't get uh, tanks until later on. Um, I, therefore, I, I don't know how good tanks are because I didn't get to use them. Uh, but I built up a lot of battleships as Germany. And uh, we ended up taking um, Russia out. So they represent the Russian Civil War uh, really neatly. If with Russia, you have um, central powers come in and they attack Russian uh, territory and they end up having, I think it's two or more Russian territories adjacent to Moscow occupied by opposing forces, along with either one or two other territories. Um, if the central powers then want, they can, um, you choose to initiate this rule and then Russia drops out of the war. Oh. And um, if you completely own any Russian territories, you're fine. But if you have any that are stuck in combat because you move troops in and those combats haven't been you know, resolved, no one owns that uh, territory, you have to, the attacker, i.e. central powers, have to at least keep one infantry uh, troop there to, to represent that like they're still working out differences, but there's not going to be any attacks or whatever. And so you can really type a lot of forces there, even though you've knocked out this one power from the war. And um, it just, it, it's neat. It's like the only one that does that. And a couple of them have required moves for the first turn, um, but not many nations do. And one thing I really like about this, unlike earlier versions of regular World War II Axis and Allies, some of those early ones, you had no way to win unless you did certain things on every turn. So it wasn't required by the rules, but players just figured out like, I, as a US, I need to do this, this, and this in this order. Otherwise we will never win. And that's not true for this. You get freedom to do whatever you want and try out different things, and you still have a, a reasonable chance of pulling out a win. So it, it's a lot of fun. It's neat, but it's just it's so long. I think we started at 5 or 6 o'clock. We went until 10 or 11, and we only just got to the end of turn 4, and things were still up in the air, but we, we just called it because of time. Yeah, that's the trouble with those games. They, although I, it sounds like I really want to play. But... Uh... We used to play, um, oh, what the hell was the name of it? Uh, Avalon Hill game. It, it was, uh, jeez, oh, I can't remember now. There's but so many of them. We'd play like for like 11 hours, you know? Shogun or Fortress America or? Um... No, it was uh, more of an ancient thing. Uh, oh. oh, there's a Rome one they did. I, I actually have that. I was going to try and do a... Uh, that's a good game. That's I can't Republic, remember. That's Republic of Rome. I was going to try and do an email game with that. That'd but, be fun. Yeah, I know. You, everybody farts out on it. You know, they, they don't keep up. No, they don't. They other things to do. You know, Didn't so. they do a pirate one? It's like broadsides and broadswords or something like that, that you actually have pirate ships? Uh, I have broadsides and, and boarding parties. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I have that. That's a fun one. And I, I also have the Avalon Hill uh, 
Blackbeard game, which I wanted to turn into a miniatures game. I haven't given up on that idea either. But I think I think I'm going to have to uh, get some interested individuals involved, or it's never going to happen. Oh, look at that! Yeah, Alex is here. back, and this is one reason why you want to watch the live show because you can see this kind of stuff. Or and we also we put this out on. Uh, YouTube, and we'll have it in the Roku channel and everything. But you can actually see Alex, which is yep. quite nice. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi. How you doing? Oh, I know yeah, where just, you are. Just needed a little reboot. Have you seen this there room? You go. Have you I seen have it? seen this room. You gave me the tour. This this is the office. The that grand the office. office. Yep. My uh, Sherlock Holmes picture in the background. How do you know? That's exactly what I was looking at. That's, I'm like, yeah, that's, the, that's, the, that's a great cool. great piece there. Oh, actually, over there too, oh. I have some nice Star Wars art. Oh, yeah, yeah. My son just wrote a. My son just wrote a Sherlock Holmes short story. Ooh. Oh wow, that's awesome! Yeah, it is awesome. It was, it was pretty good. Very good. Sorry to drop. I just I, I figured a reboot would uh would hit would take the trick. It, it usually does. Sometimes I have issues too, and we just we meander through. You missed, although maybe you didn't. And you should have been there, but you were probably doing something on Saturday. You're talking about X and Allies, 1914, and, and Norton. So, I did. So I did hear most of it. I actually got most of it before I rebooted. Okay. And yep. um, I've been. That's not the only thing I've done, though. And it, this is weird. This is one reason why, for many, many episodes, I never talked about wargaming stuff that I've been doing, other than what the episode's about, because I don't normally do stuff. But I've been busy okay. because a while ago, and I mentioned on social media, but a while ago we got or I got, rather, a free review copy of the Perry Brothers Travel Battle Game and did an unboxing video. There'll be a link in the show notes. And we're going to review it on an upcoming episode of the podcast. But I shot I it. Play it, it, it. It looks good. I haven't read the rules, but it looks good. The rules are, how many pages are they? They are not even a dozen pages. What is this, eight, ten pages? Uh, and some uh, of it is just it. assembly is what it is, and, and ideas for painting. So you got Mike. This is your kind of game, okay? It is. Uh, there's one, two. Oh, I want that damn game. <laughs> three. There's four pages. Four, four pages of rules. That's it. And how it, much? How, how much? much no. How much table real estate does it take? Um. Do you know it comes with its own boards? Right. That you play on, and they're not. Oh, can I get them without? I mean, it looks like you could play it on a coffee table. So the the idea behind this is one of the Perry brothers, and I can't remember which. I'm gonna presume it was Michael, uh, but I might be wrong. But I I believe it's the one who you got a fifty fifty chance. Right. <laughs> but I don't want to be wrong, is what it is. And so well, I believe wait, you committed the brother who lost his hand during some reenacting, and um he wanted to do wargaming in the hospital. And in the olden days, I mean, old school wargaming was done. Like, kids did it on their bed. Um, so he wanted to do that, but how could you do it? So they devised this. And here's a board, and I don't have anything to measure it with right here. But oh, that's, like, that's like a foot square, maybe. Okay, so there's two of them, and that's what you play on. Yeah. And Perfect. so you don't need a whole lot of space. The, their idea was, this is something you can buy, you throw it in the car, you bring it with you, and you play on your hotel bed when you're at a convention or you're just going somewhere. You can use it as your carry-on for flying. It's like fifty dollars, um, not fifty, fifty pounds, um, British pounds is what I think it is. So it's probably like seventy-five American. Um, I'm not one hundred percent on the price, just because I didn't pay for it, <laughs> so I, I, I don't remember, and I don't have that info in front of me. Yeah, I want to get one. <laughs> what? I want to get one. I got to take it everywhere I go. Oh, you should. It's you get it. You keep it in your trunk, is what it is. And you just bring it with well, you. I don't, have a, I don't have a trunk. Well, I know you get the truck, so it would go in the back of your truck. Well, no, because it would get. No, I'll put, put it behind. It, it can ride shotgun. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't hardly have a passenger anyway. <laughs> so I, I did um, a video recently, uh, which is in our Patreon campaign. Uh, people can see the video, but was asked by a listener to shoot a video of how you assemble it, and so I shot video. Uh, showing how you assemble the, the houses and how to be careful about stuff and the different colored figs and how you do their eight mil, which is an unusual skill. You didn't paint those. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. he assembled. He didn't really. You, I I did say assembled. I didn't say paint. <coughs> so they come right. with a blue. Before we go any further, I want to bring something up with you. Oh no no no! 
they come with the you guys blue really let me down when you didn't get <laughs> some feedback in there for Jonathan the paint. Yeah, that you was know, what all the these all these listeners out there. They just sat on their hands and they didn't say anything. And it was a low threshold. Painting. It was at least ten people share uh, the episode on Facebook <laughs> and send us a screenshot of it. Uh, that was the, the, the audience was really disappointed me. Of course, I know they don't care whether they disappoint me or not. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I really don't. like to see Jonathan paint something. Well, I tell Let's you, get him to paint that army. I almost. I almost, if I had time before tonight's recording, I almost was going to pull out the figure and at least assemble and prime it black and then oh, and show you. But then I didn't run out of time. So it, it's oh, not what an excuse. That's terrible. But I did assemble this. You've got plenty of time. Which are your blue and your red army, which is very old school. They do give yeah, suggestions. I'm okay. no, I'll just leave them like that. In, in the, yeah. I mean, they give you suggestions in the rule book for how to paint them and how to paint the terrain board. I might. Yeah, no, if I'm going to spend time painting, I'm going to paint all that other crap that's sitting in my hobby room. Well, and see, that's the thing. I, I think the idea is you don't have to paint, and I I'm, I'm, have no intention of painting anything except on the terrain board, you do have some crop areas, and it's just it's girl and green molded plastic. It's from Renedra. They, they did all yeah. the plastics, so you know it's good. But I might, just might, kind of do like a brown to represent that it's not just grass. Right. Didn't and, I see? Isn't there an example somewhere of somebody painted one up? It looks nice. Do you know? I bet they have it on their um, social media, and it's uh, on the back of the. Oh room. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. I saw that. And and they show like how you could paint the figures. Right. Of course, I mean, because they're small, they're old school. They're not something you're gonna really want to go all out on or anything. Well, uh, but we did the video. Well, or, well, nice if you if that's what you you've got nothing else to paint. But you know, most of us. These are, yeah. they're so small though. I mean, seriously. But you know, no, of course not. I'm, I wouldn't either. But like the parents made them, so they look awesome. But if I tried, they'd look like a mess. And as far as no, I'm no, concerned, no, no, no. I don't think that's the case. I think if you tried, they'd come out okay. They, I just they, don't think you'll no, try. No. <laughs> eight, no. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you've already you've already put them on too, so I don't know how you're gonna. I guess you could still get at them. Well, and see, the, the choice was either I would intend to paint them on the sprue or i would get the assembly video done for the listener who wanted it right <laughs> so i said i'd get the video done and uh i'm mean, gonna paint something paint something else okay. so in your opinion if you're if you're going to uh if you're gonna paint uh -huh. what scale is the easiest to paint is it 28 like the 28 larger scale at that point because i think there's a greater chance to screw that up and make it very visible to screw it up however you're the smaller you go, the more blobby things. You, I guess you can get away with more blobby, but it's also re 15. really, really sloppy. You think 15 is the easiest? 15 is great because yeah. I think it's a perfect compromise, except I prefer painting 28 mil tanks. I'm a tank okay. guy. Okay. And by 28, yeah. I mean like GW yeah. 35 mil. Right, right, right. 25, 28. <laughs> Not real. I, I think you could, you could really Heroic. kill yourself. With 15s, if you if you're one of those kind of guys that has to have everything be absolutely perfect. Yes, which, you could, but which you I'm don't, not. I'm, no, so. you don't need to. You can you can no. painstakingly detail one, which is difficult. Whereas right. you know 28 with the detail, if you if you want to put that level of detail in it, maybe it's a little easier because it's a little easier to reach. Um, it is, but like yeah. then you I, really I, do have to put the detail in. Right, but then you really I have to like, sort of bother you. Know, yeah, I feel like if you're gonna put that kind of work into something, I mean, I there's guys out there that have beautiful arms. It's amazing, you know. And I, I'm not knocking any of those guys. The stuff is really nice. I have kids playing in my game, so I'm not going to that. Yeah, but your stuff I mean, is still really nice. I mean, I've seen it. Well, it's nice enough, you know. I mean, I you know I want it to look good, but I'm not. You know, if I'm gonna put my heart and soul into it, those kids aren't touching it. You know right. What I mean? Yeah. Sure. I hear you. And, and plus. I think if you're going to put your heart and soul into something, it should be like a display piece. Carol Pandolf at OGC painted a, a Cthulhu that was like incredible. And when my game was over, she let me put it on the table and take a few shots. And the lighting was bad, so I thought that was going to ruin the pictures, but it actually helped. This is, um, cool. I, don't know, I don't know if this will show, but this is a, the pirate that I've been working on is that blurry? Yeah, I guess that's a little blurry. Yeah, blurry. Yeah. He's he's been around. I've been working on him for too long now. 
<laughs> a lot of work. Yeah, you're doing exactly what I'm talking about. You you, you can't finish it because you, uh, no, you just I, want I, it to be. I can't finish it because I stopped painting. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got lazy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the no, only yeah, completely painted historical wargaming army I have is for Flames of War, 15 mil. Which you don't play. No, but I can well, use the what? figs for stuff. You don't even like it that much. Yeah. A chain of command I think I can use it for. I can use it for all sorts of stuff. It's painted. You can I make get, stuff up. I get panthers in there. All up like that. It's German. So I, I can see that again. Let me see that again. I didn't get a good look at the pirate either. I, he was looking pretty good. I wanted to see about what the hell. The pirate? Yeah. Yeah. This is when we started having delusions of playing um, whatever pirate game we were going to play. Blood oh, and I wish Thunder. You could, I wish you yeah. could put that at a, at a spot where it would come in sharper. Yeah, I don't know how to. I don't either. I get, do you mean shoving him closer to the camera is not doing the trick? No, that's not helping. No. <laughs> Put him next to your head. You're coming in sharp. Yeah, you are coming in sharp. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. How's that look? <laughs> it looks like he's on your head. Yeah. Can you see me now? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll take some pictures of him, Pull and I'll put him on. I'll put him online. There you go. All I right. do. I think he's good, and actually, I'm working on his. Uh, his his nemesis again, not really getting a lot done, but you know. I love the red. Yep, the red looks so good. Looks so good. So we'll see. We'll see if we ever get around to a pirate game. I I uh, based him on nickels just because I was lacking bases. Not if when nickels are perfect. Total con twenty seventeen people heard it here. What'd you say? Total con twenty seven twenty eighteen. Oh, oh yes yes. Uh, Blood and plunder. It's happening. Because I I got a mat for it. <laughs> so oh, wait, so, now, uh, so now I have to paint pirates. You do. It, 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 that see that's related to the other thing that I did that was wargaming. I received a free advanced copy of the Scarbox Battle Kickstarter double sided mat plush mats. And Ooh. so one of the sides was. Ocean I bet Road. it's right there, right in front of you. It, oh um no, it's on the. Why the heck? I, oh, I have it wrapped up because I brought it. Uh, but it's a beachhead, which would be great for D-Day, actually. But um, they recommend it for Blood and Plunder. So did uh, a Kickstart, not a Kickstarter, did an unboxing video for it, uh, which took a lot of time. And uh, we're backing it on Kickstarter. Everyone else should, too. The pricing is really good. So uh, if if uh, if we're doing pirates, as I told Adrian, I'm I'm definitely doing ghost pirates just to be not non-period and to really just rub him the wrong way. <laughs> you should do because it it'd be fun. And anything to just kind of. And every time I'm gonna say zoinks, ghost <laughs> pirates. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, it's okay for you to do that because you're not gonna be splitting a room with them at the con. That's true. If I did that, like, God, I, <laughs> <laughs> he, I think he already told me that I shouldn't. <laughs> uh, it was advised well. against. <laughs> So now you have to do it now. Yes, yeah. Well, see, I I, uh, I do too much fantasy gaming to not to not do ghost pirates because that just makes sense. It well, fits I mean, in. There's a lot of use with them, right? Exactly. Well, you know, you're going to use them for something. That's so why not? Yeah, right, right. I'm big on the multi-purpose. If I'm going to paint something, it better be able to fit in a bunch of different things. Yeah, if it's not going to go into hang high, then I'm probably not going to do it either. I kind of feel the same way. I mean, not about hang high, but in general, you know, for, for my specific purpose, it has to fit. Yeah, the stuff that you do. Yep. yep. So, Alex, were those some of the things you've been working on lately, those pirates? Oh, well, I, I think they've been sitting around for a while, so I'll say that I've been working on them. They've been on my painting table. That counts. Um, that troll that I showed, I, I was kind of doing him. Uh, he's been sitting there for a while. Uh, I started working on this guy. Uh, oh, nice. A Chinese uh, war dog? Well, he's, he's a oh, lion. Man. Yeah, he's oh. a lion. Um, and I don't know I don't know what I'm doing with him, so I just sort of started dry brushing. I, I, you know, I based him, and then I started just dry brushing to see what kind of effect I could get. I think he was so holding I, you up to the camera. Yeah, you didn't have to bring him there. You were holding him up to the camera. That's what you were doing. Yes. Get yes. him to hang high. So, oh, yeah. that would fit. We'll find something for him to do. Yeah, yeah. So he, he can eat somebody. And then um, I don't know. I've been talking tough about getting the D and D game going, which isn't war gaming, but it is New England gaming because everything I do technically is New England gaming. <laughs> I get away. I get away with that. Yeah, hey, uh, I've used it too. 
<laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've been talking tough about a D and D game. Um, so I've been trying to get my head around that, and as usual, my schedule is just not easy and not awesome. So it makes it tough. That is tough. Yeah. Other than that, I've been playing a lot of Diablo. <laughs> Does that still count as New England gaming? Yeah. Diablo three. What's Diablo? I, video, I know Diablo? I've heard. Of... Yeah, video game. I've never played it. I don't know much about it. You play it yeah, it's a video game. It's a pretty mind mind numbing. Is it a role playing game? Yes. Kind of. Well, it's more like an, honestly, it's more like an arcade kind game. Kind of a role playing game. Well, it, the, it's like actiony. So, it, to me, it looks more like an arcade game. You basically have a guy, and when he's powerful enough, you're just tearing through. It's not like a painstaking turn based, you know, fight. It's just sort of blow things apart constantly. So was it a video game, a board game? What is yeah, it? yeah, video game, video game. Oh, it's a video game. All right. Well, that's yeah. why I don't know nothing about it. I don't touch it. Yes, games. yeah. Yep. Hey, you played on the computer, Mike. Hey, if I got addicted to one of those, I wouldn't do all this other crap I'm not doing. Well, that's kind of what started to kill my painting is I started doing other things yeah, like that I, again. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I have a, a, a legitimate fear of getting involved in something that I, I like. I used to have this... Uh, DOS game called the Age of Rifles, and you could play any major engagement that took place during the uh, 19th century, and I was hooked on that big time. Mm -hmm. And now I can't use it; I can't play it on this computer. So um, that's good. It's probably yeah, good. It's good, but the I mean the, the scenario ideas. Oh man, I, I ran a couple of games out of that. Matter of fact, uh, it has cussed his last stand. And I, I swear we're going to do that one of these days. You got to. Nice. Yeah. Well, all I got painted right now is Reno's command, so it's not going too good. You know, that's another 10-year project that's going nowhere. I phase in and out of things. Like, I, I mean, I painted very, very heavily for, I don't know, probably two years, which was great. Uh, and I didn't play any video games, you know, save turning it on 20 minutes here and there. Um, and now I'm sort of like, you know, the, the pendulum swung the other way and I'm, I'm doing a little more video gaming, a little less painting, a little less getting out of the house. <laughs> yeah. I got to stay away from the video game stuff. I've been doing oh. more of it too, because on the side, I started reviewing video and computer games for a, a blog. That's not ours. <laughs> oh. And so, uh, I've been doing more and more of that. I see how it is. Uh. It's a lot of fun. They wow. send me free games to try. So I'm what? Involved. Wait a minute. What system do you even have? So, Last I checked, you were running like an Xbox 360 still. <laughs> Thanks. You wound me. So um, <laughs> is that not true? <laughs> you're like you're not a real gamer. You're using old crap. Uh, so we do a lot on Steam, which is great. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We do it on MacBook, mm -hmm. and then I have a Wii, and we got a 360. I got a PS2 somewhere, uh, which is a so. Problem. What do they send you like? The original Super Mario Brothers, and they're like, "Could you give a review copy of this, please?" <laughs> I'd love to know how this game is. <laughs> it's only been around since 1980, whatever. For I actually I played a really good platformer recently, and um, it's yeah, on it's Steam. Called Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> yeah, I used to play that. Super Mario Brothers Two. So my work buys video games. Uh, never got that really cool. And I just played the remastered Ducktales, which is awesome. Oh, nice. Because the original was like way too hard, and this is still very difficult, but it's good. And uh, I was playing with a, my two and a half year old the other day, so like she's moving Scrooge McDuck around, and I'm like, jump! You press press the blue button, and he jumps, and she's like, oh, daddy, he jumps, and I'm like, yeah, do Pogo's jump, Pogo jump, you gotta get it. It was a lot of fun. So you brought up the children, so I'm gonna bring this up real quick. So uh, I mentioned I was been playing a lot of Diablo three, and I got my seven year old, my seven year old daughter, has finally, as of this past weekend we have co-op completed the entire game. It took, Whoa. it's taken pretty much the summer because you give, you don't give her a lot of screen time, obviously. Um, so we went act one through act five, did the whole thing. Uh, she's got a maxed out character. <laughs> we, we, uh, it was probably a little age inappropriate at times. So I, I skipped some stuff. Uh, but it's a very easy game for a little kid to play, especially because, um, if you, you know, if you're co oping you can kind of carry, carry the load a little bit, you know, and, and make sure she's staying okay. 
Um, so it was a great daddy daughter bonding nerd gaming thing. That's it was awesome. Cool. It was cool. It was fun. I was proud of her. Where do you guys come up on how much screen time is too much? Um, do you set like a limit per day, per week? Is is it dependent on? It's definitely something? not uh, agreed upon <laughs> necessarily between husband and wife here. So, so um, you can just I, say you, you would give her more, and your wife would give her less. I think that's that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely. That's uh, probably just how it's going to go at your house. <laughs> We, you know, you got to get everything done first, of course. That's the thing. Um, and there, there was one day where it was, I think it was maybe early July where she didn't have any camp this summer. I took the day off and she and I sat on the computer, on the, on the PC, on the play, sorry, the PlayStation for, I don't know. It was like sun up to sundown playing Diablo. It was really a lot. I mean, it was way too much. So Uh, your wife was at work, right? Because yes, she worked that day and we had a daddy daughter just game day. But the thing is, is that I recall, I, maybe I wasn't seven, but I remember having these long gaming days as a kid, maybe at like 10, 11, 12. And my parents, of course, not wanting that to be the thing. There was a lot of go outside and play and all that. But every now and then, you would get a day where you would really get like a good solid eight hours of video games. Oh, um, <laughs> and, and I grew up okay. I'm, I, I promise everyone, I'm okay. I'm normal. The Germans right, are going to do some of this. The Germans are fun. Why not? So, why not? Do you know what but I, it was I, a fun experience. It was fun. I mean, I started young. I was six when i had my first atari and i didn't play it all day long i, I wanted to do play legos go outside or whatever yeah but like and then when we got the uh nes and nintendo entertainment system i remember i really strong memories of you know playing it for a little bit and then my parents sending me to bed because it was bedtime but really it was because they wanted to play it. and like my aunts oh, wow. uncles would come and my cousins would come in everyone would be playing while i'd be asleep and i'd happen you know wake up or whatever i'd have a nightmare or something wake up i'd hear a noise and I'm like, what was that? And then like I'd, I'd go out into the living room and, and see them, and then I'd play. Like we'd play for like whatever late was for like a six or seven year old back in the eighties, and uh, and then knowing that this happened, and so therefore I then did not want to go to bed, or yep. I pretend I was asleep, and then I'd be like, oh, let me wake up and just see who's over, <laughs> and go and play. As usual, I've, I'm derailing things, but I'll give you this one quick story. When I was a kid. So you remember like the old NES, it basically had like a power button and a reset button, if you remember that, right? And the power button had the little red dot to show it was on or off. So in those days, as you know, saves, not every game saved. Like you turned off Ninja Gaiden and you were like starting over. So the, the call was, you know, hey, turn off the games. It's time to go to school or whatever we were doing. And I said, yep, okay. And rather than turn it off, I hit pause and I put a, uh, a game or something, a case or something up against <laughs> covering the button. Wow. And my mom found out and it was like uh, no Nintendo for <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, or yeah. something insane. Wow. <laughs> it was across the line. I did. Oh, I totally did. Oh, I, I and, and, I, and I lost my save anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> well, I remember my mind being blown when I first discovered the Konami code. Oh, yeah. And then discovered that you could use it not just on Contra, but on other like games. A whole too. bunch of things, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the heck? And best thing ever, because that was just awesome. No, another fun fact on me and my Nintendo days I have mentally embedded in my head 0737359963, which is the code to Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson's Punch Out. That's important. Uh, I just happen to know that. It'll never leave my head. Because you got to skip ahead. I will. I, I will get old. I will get old. I will get become senile, and I'll be just saying those numbers, and no one will know <laughs> what it means. Do you want that some detective? <laughs> some detective will come, and he'll be like, "Oh, it's the code for Mike Tyson. It's not anything. It's not where I hid the treasure or anything <laughs> like that." <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh man, that's. Funny. I used to play that. I never got too far. My kid did though. No, I couldn't either. He was I beat everybody. Up. I could never. I could get up to Mike Tyson, but I could not beat him. And no. even even today, no, I, I still can't beat him. Well, one hit, I never went that close. What's that? And if they made it now, though, it'd be like instead of him hitting you, he'd just come up and bite your ear off. Oh God, here we go. Yeah, they, 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 I saw somebody beat it. Like, blindfolded. Oh, sorry. Someone beat that game blindfolded. I thought that was crazy. 
That's all. it's like those people who do the Rubik's cubes behind their back and blindfolded. Yeah. Well, I, I don't. I can't. I, mean, you, I could see beating. I mean, not that I could do it, but I could see it because it's a it's a timing game, right? And everything is based on a little like there's sound cues, and really everything is like a count. You know, everything runs on a beat in that game. And if you are just precise with your movements, you always know what you're going to do. Well, any of those old ones, um, Donkey Kong, right? The only way to get to the end, you have to know the timing of it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen The King of Kong, which is a great documentary about Donkey Kong. And there's this arcade up in New Hampshire, actually, that like, has all these old arcade games. And people go there to set um, Guinness World Records. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's about this guy who's training to set a Guinness World Record for high score on Donkey Kong because a lot of those old arcade games, which they then, of course, ported to Nintendo and so forth, um, because we're doing a video game show now. Um, but a lot of those old <laughs> arcade games, they didn't have an end. So they they coded it up to a certain point, and then it, eventually the game would run out of memory. Nothing else would happen, so then it would just freeze. Sure. And game ended. Like, that was it. There was no, like, you won or whatever. Just you did the next level until... And so you have to be really perfect. Same with Pac-Man, actually. You would be really perfect in order to do things timed just right so you can get the maximum amount of points uh, to get wherever. And so it's a very good documentary. People should... Uh, Take the time out to watch. I think it's on Netflix. I'm People pretty sure I'm not watching that. King of Kong, really good. Um, yeah. Speaking of New Hampshire, though, I'd rather play pinball. In. Oh, yeah. That's what I that? would be doing. While you guys are on Atari, I'm in survival room playing pinball. <laughs> you're you're a pinball wizard. No, but I like to play. <laughs> <laughs> or shoot pool, which I'm, I'm even worse at. I'm terrible at that. Yeah, it's a fun game. It's good to hear people admit it because I think most people think they're good. Yeah, until they well, actually play. Know, yeah. I'm awful. Yeah, yeah. If you want to be good, you got to almost like dedicate your life to it. And I'm not sure. doing that. So. Sure. Yeah, because you're busy painting. Well, yeah, sure I am. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we talk I got about a lot open of things I want to paint? What's that? Why do we talk about open gaming convention? OGC. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's it's do up that. in New Hampshire. Yep, it was. In, so uh, my, in Nashua, yes. Yeah, you were there, right? It was July 21st to the 23rd of 2017, and they held it at the Holiday Inn. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the second time. Although I found out this weekend that they had previous, uh, you know, cons that I hadn't been to had been at that hotel. Oh wow. Yeah, but they they're back there for the for the second time for me. These last two events, it's it's nice. They have a big like pirate ship in the middle of one of the rooms. And that's cool. That's, yeah, it is kind of cool. Crazy. Huh. I guess it used to be a club or something like that. And uh, they still got the pirate ship there. Or, well, sailing ship, whatever it is. Pretty cool. I would have liked to have attended that club. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. I, I don't yeah. know what kind My of pirate. going to all the wrong places. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> last year, somebody ran... Uh, some kind of D and D pirate game or something up there, or Seven Seas or something like that. But nobody did and, it this year, and they just left the ship. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, it's pretty I, nice. I, I read that they do a different theme every year, and the theme this year was that's right. Redrum. No, Red Rum. R E D. Oh, red <laughs> Rum. <laughs> Come on. Well, you can pronounce it any way you want. Tomato, tomato, right? No, no, not no. tomato, tomato. Red rum. Yeah, most people know it's red rum. Or tomato, tomato. And your no. listeners are definitely getting thrown off track when you call it re-drum. <laughs> so the That's theme was sure. re-drum. Yeah, I mean, who's seen The Shining? Have you seen The Shining or not? It's, I thought it was The Shining. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Oh, the Shining. <laughs> Uh, tomato, tomato. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. This so is why were... they don't let me on often. So when you were running your game, Mike, you're gonna be on anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> How did you uh, include or use the theme of murder backwards? How did I use it? Yes. I didn't use this. I never, I never, I never pay attention to themes. Really? Now, why no. is that? I find that fascinating. 
because it just doesn't fit what I want to do. You don't feel the need to integrate it somehow? No. I'm doing I'm doing my thing. Hmm. And I don't care if anyone likes it, you know, you don't you can leave. <laughs> you know, I tell that to everybody, you know. I mean, I, as a matter of fact, I tell people they can walk into my game in the middle of the game, I'll give you a command, you know, if it's not your thing, you can leave. You know, you're not going to spoil the game. I didn't have many players this year. I actually I had something this never happened to me before. Guys signed up to play the game. You know, I've given him a character, everything. And then he must have realized that, hey, this is a 16-foot table. I'm going to be walking around this thing for four hours. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I get something out. Well, he comes over and gives me, gives me a song. I, I, I assume that it was a true story. But <laughs> I got something wrong with my feet, and I, I can't, you know, you get. I'm like, that's okay, pal. He didn't want to stand there for. Get a walker or something. I don't know. He didn't want to stand there for four hours with the guy. Yeah, around. He, didn't, yeah, he didn't want to walk around. Maybe he just decided that this is just not something I want to do. I don't know. But that was a pretty good. No one's given me that excuse before. <laughs> so, you know, my hat's off to him. Good excuse. Uh, for that. So I didn't have a very uh, big crowd of players. You know, down at TotalCon, I had 15. That was like tied the record. What do you consider so, not uh, a big crowd? Did you have like eight? You have ten? Well, you know what it is? This this con, uh, you know, I've been trying to get people. Well, they used to have a a, a, a Warhammer tournament, you know, 40K or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, those guys started doing their own thing somewhere else. So they don't have as much miniatures as they used to. And a, a couple of people that were supposed to run games didn't run them. I'm not mentioning any names. I imagine maybe you will. <laughs> It's almost as if we talked about it before the show. Yeah, we absolutely <laughs> did. Well, so I got but, a question, uh, right? Do you have a feel okay. for how many people attended? Because I've gotten the impression, and I'm, I'm fully willing to admit that I'm wrong, but I've gotten the impression that this is a very tiny convention, almost like a, uh, an expanded game day kind of thing. I, I wouldn't say that because uh, there's – there's this guy, I, I haven't met him. I, I saw him a couple of times, and he's on the uh, the OGC Facebook page. And he had posted something about, uh, you know, well over 100 uh, role-playing games got played. Okay, that's a lot of people. You figure yeah. four or five people per game or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I forget what the number was. It was a lot. I, when, I, when I saw that, I said, wow. And he, he was excited about it because, you know, that's kind of like more than they've had done in the past, so. You know, and, uh, you know, people were having fun. I know that. You That's know, no good. About it. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd like to see the uh, the miniatures get built up a little bit more because that's what I do. But, uh, you know, people are having a good time. Well, I, I looked at the it. event listing on their site because I was just kind of curious about um, all the things that were there. Usually, and this is going to sound like I'm complaining about you, and I'm not, but usually whenever <laughs> we talk about a con that you're at, Mike, you're, you're running a game, so of course that's where your focus has to be because you got to create uh, a really good environment for your players. But because of that, you don't really get a chance to walk around as much and see all the other events that are going on. So whenever I see an event listing, I like to go look and see what else is there. And they have like tons and tons and tons of role-playing games. It, it almost right. came across as if it was a, a role-playing game convention. It, it they, almost is, yeah. And they had just a few uh, minis games. And so I was excited by what I saw. Um, I think they might have a few board games too, but not very many. Um, I think only saw right. maybe three or four listed, right. which could be wrong. But they right. had. Oh, a, no, that, that, that's right. But uh, I had a friend of mine that that wanted to come. He had some friends he wanted to bring. So, but he's a board. He wanted to play board games, and uh, so I I asked about it, and uh, there weren't that many board games, but they do bring their collection. So there's a whole library of board games there. Oh, so you can just you you yeah, go walk in it and just pick a, a game. game. Yeah, if you want if you want to play a board game, you, you're gonna be, you're gonna be able to do that because there are quite a few of them. There. As a matter of fact, you could probably get somebody to show you how to play a board game. You know, if there was a certain one you wanted to learn. I know. When I, uh, when I looked at the event listing, there were some things that really stood out to me as uh, things that must have been pretty awesome for people, or that I would consider a highlight. So like the I saw Andre Krupa listed, 
running a bunch oh, of Star yeah. Wars Edge of Empire RPG yeah. things. Yeah. And I don't know that, how many people are familiar with them. Mike, I know you are, but like he runs these really awesome, immersive role-playing game events. And I never knew he's connected with those Dark Phoenix Phoenix people who do the Dark Phoenix RPG events. Right. And he has he has his own uh, thing, too. Uh, I think it's Soapbox Games. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I actually got... He, he and I are at the same con many times, and we don't even cross paths because he's doing his thing and I'm doing my thing. And, uh, you know, afterwards, like, hey, did you have a good time? But uh, we did get a chance to chat this year, and that, that was kind of nice. And I go to a few cons he's at, but I got to say I only ever see him when I go to Total Con because he's an industry guest. And so I see him at the end of the day when I'm hanging out with the industry oh, guests. Right, right. And like I'll wave at him or whatever, but even then, like I don't really get to chat with him because I'm, I'm talking with other people, um, you know, at those after hours kind of events, and that's about the only time I get to see him. Like I email with him because he does da a database stuff for like Huzzah, and I think he helps out Havoc. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, he does all that stuff too. Uh, so I'll email him and, and talk with him that way. But in person, I don't get to see him. Um, Alex, did you get to see him? Or you may not even know who he is. Did you get to see him at Havoc? No, I I, I don't think so. You gotta you play, a play. Game. I, I hear that a lot. I gotta play. <laughs> Mike, don't you think Alex would love playing in one of his things? Oh, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Well, I don't think anybody wouldn't. He, know, he's won I'm some like GM awards and stuff too, I think. Oh wow, neat. Oh yeah. And doesn't he publish he publishes what's that game he published? He got he won some sort of award for. I, I can't that's terrible. Uh, it's, well it's the game that he runs. No, but the, you know, I can't think. You know, it's the horror thing. stuff. Yeah, because he does a lot of like Call of Cthulhu style things. Yeah, he he brought me up uh, when the OGC was at the other hotel. He brought me up to show show me his uh, setup, and he's got all this lighting and sound. I mean, this is he does, like, machine you know, stuff it, too. It's, and... it's, it, matter of fact, I I remember the term now that he uses. It's uh, immersive role playing. Yeah, and oh, it's got to be incredible. You know, cool. it, yeah, definitely cool. His stuff sells out really fast. And so, like, I saw him listed not just once, but, like, three or four times for Star Wars. And I thought, oh, this is a system I've wanted to play for a while. I actually have the core rules, and I, I never read them. But I was like, I love Star Wars. So I was excited to see him listed. And then I saw Mark Edwards listed, uh, who I know from uh, TotalCon. Uh, I've seen him floating around there. And he was doing the Heroes of Altamira uh, RPG stuff. He did, like, tons of them. Which I think that might be the seven C's thing you're thinking of, because I, I think that's the core oh, maybe. stuff he does. Could be. And then um, they do they do so much stuff there. I did take one picture of the the room where everybody was in there doing their thing, and it was a pretty good crowd in there. And that was just during one session. So. And then there were some other friends of ours, friends of the, of, the, of the show, who I saw listed in the event listing for uh, miniatures events, which got me real excited. Uh, yeah, here it comes. So Timothy Colonna. Uh, for his sci-fi game, Trilaterum. Yep. Uh, so he was listed uh, there, and he was on uh, episode 175. Right. Of the show. So I was yeah, excited to see right. him. I, I, uh, I was looking forward to seeing Tim, but I didn't see him. I, I'm hoping that he's running that in a slot at the Hobby Bunker game day that I can play in, because I really want to oh, play in it. Yeah, he might be. He might be. I haven't I haven't chatted with him lately. Well, Tim, this if you listen... Max played in my game at his island. He's a great little kid. He's a, he's a lot of he's, I, I love these guys have some great kids that play my games. Well, both his kids, so I've seen pictures of them, you know, online, and both of them just look like they're really into all this kind of stuff. I know his wife is too. It just seems like the whole family's really into all of this. So I, I think that's yeah, great. I, I haven't met his wife yet. And then um, Maxie McKay uh, was listed as GMing a game of Frostgrave. Yeah, I really miss seeing Maxie and Mike. I love her, and um, yeah, I like the, I love them both. They're great. Michael Johns, um, who's her husband, uh, he was on episode one seventy seven of the show. He was listed for running a game of Frostgrave, and then Dave Valentine uh, was also listed for running a game of Frostgrave. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to see Dave too. Did, Dave, you know, did you see uh, them? Did did they get a good well, turnout? Well, the thing is, is uh, I think he ended up at the, you know, I I love his uh but they kind of cut my throat when they had the, the game day the same day as the OGC. Because I, I think I could have drawn in a few, uh, maybe some of those guys that run games up there, maybe I could have got them to come down here. But, you know, you, you know, everybody likes to do things 
you know, when they want to do them, so not much you can do about it. But uh, I know it wasn't intentional or anything. They don't know what they don't know nothing about the OGC. You know, they're doing their own thing. So, oh, do you know what? Because I saw the postings about the um, Manistore Global Gamers Association game day. Right. And um, they sent me invites because I'm an MHWA member, but I didn't even connect that they the same date. I didn't. As I didn't OGC. either. I didn't. I didn't either. You know, because I'm always in my own little world over here. I don't know nothing about that's going on except what's in front of me. You know, but uh, there must be a way that it dawned, it dawned on me when I was the only miniatures game. Yeah. You know, I'm like, really? You know, I'm the only one. You know. So Dave wasn't there. Was Mike and no. Maxie there? No. Oh, was Timothy no. there? They didn't make it. No. So none of them. Wow. No. That's odd that they're still in the event listing. I mean, at least that's I was feeling pretty lonely, lonely hanging out at Hang High all by myself. But you know what? There's a good thing because Hang High is a really good game, and you fill up a lot of floor space. So, like, even yeah, though well, I'm gonna, I, 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 a lot of people. I, I, I talked to to John. Uh, I, I always say say John's last name wrong, so I'm not so I'm not gonna mess it up on him. But John uh, runs the con, and uh, I I asked him if I could have the space for the whole weekend if I wanted it, and he's going to let me have it. So uh, awesome! So I'm going to be running, you know, maybe five hang high games. Wow! You know, because I'm gonna I'm not going to stay at the hotel, but uh, it's a short ride for me, so I can leave the game set up all weekend. And because uh, I had people come up to the table and says, "What what what slot are you running in?" It's like, "Oh, well, I'm I'm doing this," you know, so. I definitely would have had uh, a few more people in in the, if I was available more than one slot. So I think I'm going to try it out next year. Plus, it just gives me an excuse to hang around with everybody too. I, I, it's a fun con. A lot of people there that I really enjoy spending time with. Carol Pandolf has this paint table thing. That yeah. you know what? If I wasn't if I wasn't running my game, I'd probably be over there the whole time because. She's got all kinds of little things to paint there. She's got the brushes and everything. And she does. I did paint something one year. Every year yeah, I see yeah, you look at yeah. and I'm like, I'm going to do it. And then I never do because yep. I get busy. But I need that to get table, to OGC. This there were some people at that table like the whole day. There was one guy over there. I, I, I had to go over and say, what the hell are you painting? You know, he painted all day, you know. But it turned out uh, he was touching up his whole collection. So that that made sense. Like, how something, long can you paint a miniature? My like, God, I would have, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, some people might take say twelve hours to paint a Flames of War objective marker. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not gonna name names like myself. Yeah, well, it better come out good if you're gonna do that much. Jeez. But you know, something like that's what I need to sign, go to a con like OGC, sign up for something like that, because then I would actually paint. I'd get something done. Yeah, you should. You should I bring think. that figure. What is that? The ba barbarian. It'll still be in the blister. Next year, next year, come up to the OGC and Carol will get your paint. So, do you know what I think? I think for 2018, I think because I I'm pretty sure, and not to sound so full of myself, but I'm pretty sure that people from MHWA and people from OGC probably listen to the show. So, if you guys are listening, I think yeah, I maybe so. there should be a little inter club inter organizational chit chat to find a way about scheduling to see if can find another free weekend to make a game day happen and OGC happen so that they're not at the same time. Because it, like you said, Mike, it's strong, the same pool of people. And uh, there's no yeah, need to yeah. take from each yeah, other. But, there's enough room. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if uh, those, you know, the gamers from Maine would come all the way down here for that. But, I, but there, I mean, there's a lot of people. I didn't, in, I didn't, they're drawing guys out of New Hampshire. <laughs> and I'm an MHWA member. So, I mean, there's people in New Hampshire who are members. And I mean, who knows? Yeah, well, you know, you know, you're trying to. I mean, they're trying to run when they're trying to run a game day. They're just trying to find a game that works for for them. Hmm. You know, so you you can't take everything into account. No, but uh, heck, they but, come down to Havoc. They come to TotalCon. They come all the way down to Massachusetts for these things. Yeah. They, yeah, they if, they, if they can, up. if they can, I know some of those guys don't get the game half as much as they want to because they got other things going on in their lives, just yeah, like right. you and I. You know, we're also if, busy. If we had our way, we'd be gaming right now. We'd be gaming all the time. Well, some of us do this like podcast. A, like a, a, a <laughs> Mr. Quiet Alex happens to have a fantastic gaming table, which would be I, great to run a D and D game on. I'm just saying. It would be. It really would be. 
<laughs> it's it's a nice table. I know. I played on it. Yep. That's right. We did get that. that that's really the only game I think at this point. That, you allowed uh, me to hug it, which yep. you said was weird, but I had to do it. It was very weird. I, I have a in uh, a geek chic table, which is uh, you know the ill fated company at this point, sadly. Um, but I got everything in before uh, before they folded. Um, so I'm I'm still raw from all that. Uh, I feel bad for those guys, but there's good news though with that. I don't know if you heard. No, nope. not for the company, but for customers, it, people who actually paid the full price for yeah. their order. I've heard those tables are still shipping out. That's good. So that's good. So they'll, that. they'll finish up the orders that they had. That's good. I think so. Oh, I mean, so. as far as they can, anyway. It's people so, lose lose deposits though. I think, but they might. So what did you get? Because I, I don't think I've seen it. Have you posted pictures of it? Already? No, I'm I'm pretty shy with it, and John intentionally is drawing me out on this. Someone um, wouldn't allow me to take photos that John. I took. I it's a it's <laughs> it's a four. So I don't have space for uh, a huge, you know, six by eight uh, or or larger. So it's a four by four uh, table. Uh, it's it's the minimalist. I don't know that you could still look it up. It's but a that's nice the table. that's the style. Um, it's got cup holders and all sorts of cool things. Little gadgets. Oh, it's a fancy table. Yeah, oh, it's one of those oh, fancy that. tables. Yeah, he's one of those. Oh, I know what you're talking. Oh, the guy, the guys. I saw those guys down at Historicon. Yes. I, I you know, yes. Oh, the the tables were incredible. And then, but then when you saw the prices, like, oh man. I, I yeah, my my wife um, is fantastic, and she not. I was the one who said I didn't want to do this, and she said we're we're going to get this table, uh, and we got some matching chairs with it too, which is really nice. Um, Isn't so, that the real reason you got the table? Well, you for, for the chairs, yeah. <laughs> I think that might have been. <laughs> you really, really like the chairs. They're um, really cut. I mean, you sat in them. They're, oh, they're great. designed in some sort of magical way where it gives you this amazing lumbar support and. Uh, you feel great. They're called eight-hour chairs, so you, you can sit in them for eight wow. hours and be comfortable. That's what they wow. say. Um, so to get the chairs, there was the, the you know not not to get the chairs was the table, but the deal was that we were going to get the table and the chairs. Uh, but I joke that I think that the real plan was to get the chairs, and the table just happened to come with it. <laughs> <laughs> so well, yeah, that's okay. No, uh, so I'm 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 fortunate with that, and someday I'll actually <laughs> have a schedule free to be able to play games on it. Yeah, we'll play Axis and Allies World War One. Well, you know, the first thing I did play was my um, my own my own set of rules that I'm still plugging away on. I guess uh, that came up on the the forum today. Uh, the Wargaming Recon. What what are we calling that page? Fan club. <laughs> oh, fan, the, the fan club. Yeah. Community page is what yeah, I just can't, that thing just came out of nowhere. I'm like, what? Um. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was the that was the first thing I ran, and and uh, Mike, someday I you know as much I I want you to play what I got as much as I want to play what you got too, because uh, I really think that we are kindred spirits in the in the way that we game. Um, well, uh, and I think you dig what I have. Well, I'm telling you right now that uh, if if anything that you want to run on my table, I'll, I'll give you a whole session at a con. Yeah, you know it's whatever, funny. My whatever you want, man. My, my space that I play on it's a it's a three by three. It's not a lot. It's very, it's very very small uh, small area. I probably could expand it, but I eight eighteen feet whatever craziness you use that's it's just way too much. Um, and it's it's fantasy driven. Basically, the idea is you pick a, a class you know that you want to play. Uh, Don't pick and, an age. Uh, sure, no, you, I, it's, a fa <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> John doesn't like my design. Wild man doesn't agree to his. That's not a mage thing. Fine. It's what? What is it then? Because I'll just rename it. Uh, they, see, that would make me happy. That would make me incredibly happy. And I'll call that'll make him happy. I'll call him the sorcerer. Happy. How's that? That would work. Okay. I, I got that board game. You can't use that. <laughs> so yeah. So um. Yeah, you, you basically pick a class, and the idea is to clear uh, essentially checkpoints on the board, right? And then um, each time you clear a, a spawn point for the enemies, which is I'm calling them checkpoints, but they're really spawn points, um, a boss appears, 
you kill the boss, uh, collect gold, upgrade your guys as you go along. It's not that dissimilar from some ideas that you've talked to me about in your own stuff. Well, I don't see why you couldn't do it on a bigger table. Um, why not? You know, just, for, just ma mainly yeah. because I think, well, I don't think I have the miniatures for, to support 18 feet of yeah, table. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I do. Well, do you have fantasy? I mean, it's, it's fantasy based. So yeah, so what? You know, I had a I had a I had a friend of mine that made a couple of uh, gyro copters for me, and he thought that, geez, I wasn't sure if these were going to really fit into your theme. I'm like, what are you? What theme? You know what I mean? I could, I'll put anything on that table. You should see some of the crap I've had on that table. No, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know what yeah. exactly you have. I've seen I've seen a layout. That's it. Well, yeah, you, yeah. Well, that's you know, I mean, this is basically what I tell anybody who wants to come back. If they if you want to come back and play. Another time, you don't have to use my stuff. Bring your own crap. You know, I let the yeah, kids. Let, you know, right. I, I, what if we had uh, Space Marines on there up in Hazar? Sure. You know, yep. and as a matter of fact, one he left, he left one behind. <laughs> oh, didn't it's Adam still, run something on your table? table? What's that? Didn't Adam run something? Was it Frostgrave he ran on your table? Oh yeah, yeah, Adam ran Frostgrave. Uh, I could not, see Frostgrave, not year, but the year before. Yeah. I yeah, it was fun. We had a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's so, fact, yeah, my, I, on my I end of things, Julie and Michelle in that game. If only my, there was my, a convention you both could perhaps go to that would be conveniently located they where don't you exist. could run such a thing. Doesn't exist. If only. <laughs> OGC's not too far away. Nope. I'm going to be there the whole weekend next year. I'm planning on it. Nashua, New Hampshire, 2018. Yeah. Do you have a date on that yet, Mike? Yeah. Do they release the dates for 2018? Uh, they may have, but I there's no I can't even remember what week we're in. So, but uh, you know, I I guess I should like ha have all these answers all worked out in advance, Jonathan, so I can actually answer it like I know what I'm talking about. But I don't. As but you I know, don't. we're very professional here. <laughs> we're quality. <laughs> well, you, well, we do pretty good. We try. <laughs> um. What else do we want to talk about about OGC? We we leave anything out? Uh, yeah, I'm sure we. Oh, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about uh, Don Don Higgins, the uh, the illustrator, was there. He's fantastic. And, uh, what's that? He's fantastic. Yeah, he is. Yeah, love him. I, I bought his book. He 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 did a. Uh, oh, I, I'm gonna get this wrong. Uh, I, I'll do the best I can. He he did a. a a challenge to himself where he was going to draw one illustration a day for 365 days. And uh, I bought a copy of that. And he, he gave me a couple of uh, prints of some of the books, uh, some of the, uh, the illustrations that are, are in the book too. And uh, I'd been asking him, he had done a nice drawing of me dressed as a mandarin. And uh, I love that drawing. And uh, I got this idea where I wanted him to do something like that for me again, but with some hang high theme stuff in the drawing room. So uh, I know whatever he does, I'm going to like. But it's uh, he took a picture of me with my uh, my hat that I've been wearing at the at the, the last couple of uh, cons, and. I think he's. I think he's going to make two images of me: one with the hat and one with the uh, the Mandarin outfit and a uh, little hang high thing going on. And then he says, "You can bring it to a printer." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know. If I'm going to go that crazy, you know." That's awesome. But uh, yeah, no, it's going to be great. I, I've That's really cool. Yeah, it should be really cool. If I could uh, trade things for a skill. Uh, I would definitely w would love to be a, an amazing artist. That I think that that's just so useful in so many different ways, especially yeah. around this hobby. I mean, the things you could do for yourself in a game. Yeah, I used I used to draw when I was a kid, and I thought I was pretty good, but I didn't keep at it. And mm. that's like we were talking about earlier. If you want to be good at something, you're going to spend a lot of time on it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Don says he's he says to me, "I'm uh, I'm better now than I was when I drew that." And you know, after you do, do uh, 365 illustrations, I guess some, something's going to break, right? Right. Yeah. But the, the book is really cool. I'll have to show it to you guys. Well, on his website, uh, he gives a little description of it, and he says that, 
quote, towards the back of the book, there are backstories based upon hand-selected concept sketches by authors like Tim Kask, who people might know from the early days of Dungeons and Dragons, Andre Krupa, who we mentioned, Mark Edwards, who we mentioned, Stephen Lee, and more. Uh, the book looks oh, good. That, that's right. That's the other thing he told me. He says, oh, you, you could get this, uh, get these autographed because most of those people were there at the con. I did get Andre to, to, uh, to sign it for me. It's cheap, twenty five ninety five on his website, or PDF for fifteen. Yeah, well, even well, the PDF would be cool to have. You know? It would. We'll have a link to it in the show notes. Oh, cool, cool. That's I, nice. I love his stuff. He's just—he's really good. Yeah. He does the con artwork for Total Con, and he did um, this really amazing dragon, a black and white sketch. And so I bought it for my wife, and we got it framed. And I don't know if we, we have it hanging up somewhere, but. You know what? I, I I think I have that print too. I haven't framed it yet though. He he, because he, he has a few of them, and this is like um, like a young kind of dragon. It's like a little little dragon, just kind of learning how to fly or whatever. A yeah. wormling. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, maybe that's not the same one. Mine has uh, he's kind of looming over a village. The one I have. It's beautiful stuff. Um, but you know what though? I I agree with them. Uh, you know, he, he's said to you that he's doing better now than even when he did that book. And someone was asking me, like, where they should start with Warhammer Recon, like, what the best episodes are. And I said, well, the newest one. And they're like, well, why? And I said, because we're always getting better. The newest one's always uh, better than the one before. <laughs> so this is the best one yet. It is. Right it has now, to be. This because one. if it wasn't, if we're regressing, things are not well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that can't be disputed. This is the best one. I, I think so. And I mean, after, what is this, over 11 years now? 12 years? 13 years? of doing the wow. show, it has to be better than it was before. Wow. And Mike, you and I, we were talking earlier, right? Actually, and, and this is something that I think, Alex, you really need to weigh in on. And the listeners need to chime in on as well. So we were talking about earlier episodes of the show. And like you were saying that you really want to hear some of the earliest ones. And I, I kind of shy away and suggest to people that they listen to more recent ones and um we were talking about direction of the show and like things how to um handle changes and stay current and modifications to make and i'm very much a person of decisions are made by those who show up so uh, people who leave feedback of course take the feedback in and, and we evaluate it and, and respond to it and deal with it appropriately but if someone never leaves feedback and never communicates with us we don't know what you're thinking we don't know what you like or dislike about the show and Mike you made the point of um, I was talking about the, the very first episode right because you said you might want to listen to it and I had remarked that I re-released it did a little editing and it got what did I say a couple thousand listens or something in the first go around many many months ago there was like four people who listened to it uh, so you said something like there's so many people who listen how can I use what like five or 10 people say? Is that right? Well, yeah, more or less. And it's like you have 10 people feedback, but there's a thousand people listening. So you're going to let those 10 people tell you what you should be doing next. I, let's, let's get that thousand people to say something. I, hey, well, I'd love that. well, yeah, there's yeah. the concept of the, the vocal minority, right? And, you know, sometimes you, that sometimes that's use feedback is useful, but if it's the wrong feedback from a vocal minority, you know, I mean, you get this all the time politically too, um, you know, for better or for worse, the squeaky wheel, right? Well, yeah, that's the, that's the sort of thing. You got to be careful of that, but I mean, you know, some feedback's better than no feedback and you're right. You have to act on, I mean, you have to make your own decisions in anything, right? Um, and you do that based on the feedback that you're getting. And I think, I think I have a hard time with feedback because I want to make sure that I'm giving it its due. Uh, but I very much am concerned about that squeaky wheel problem. Of, so I look to see, is there a commonality here? If one person is like, oh, you, we really wish you would do more reviews, right? I'd love to hear that. If you feel that way, that's great doesn't mean we're going to do more reviews if one of you says, oh, yeah, we wish there were more reviews on the show. But if, like, 10 people write in and 10 of you say 
we would love for more reviews. We're going to do more reviews because there's that right. commonality there. There's a right. consensus about it, right? Is it, there's no one off in the fringe who's just so far away from everyone else. Um, for me, it, it, it's hard because I can see there are tons of you who listen to the show, like tons more than I ever imagined. And I'm guilty of this myself. Like I listen to podcasts and you might think, okay, I want to write in like I really feel strongly about whatever they said. I feel really good about it. I feel really bad about it, whatever. But life happens. So you don't and or other things pop up or you don't have the time or you just you maybe you don't feel as motivated to do it. So the people that actually do, I give a little extra credence to because they actually made the time to do such a thing. But I, I'm aware that there are so many people, so many listeners, right, who for whatever reason don't. And I'd love for more to do. And, and little, you made it a at, lot easier with that community page. I hope so. And, and not just well, for feedback, but just like for people to hang out. I, I think and I like being on that thing already because I like to yap about yeah, no, it. I think that's a, a good thing. But what about uh, what we talked about with Jasper recently in his survey? How about a, a War Game and Recon survey? We can do that. You know, I'm, you know, yeah. it might not be that great the first time you do it, but just keep tossing it out there. You know, people might check it out. But people have to take it. That's the you thing. don't know what well, you're, yeah, you, you, you're going to get, it, though. You try. No, well, you, sure. well, right. And no, no, yeah, you, you, you've got to ask the right questions, too. Well, and that's the question, right? Like, what that's are the hot pot, really. How about, like how about the feedback questions, right? pieces? How about, how about those guys... Uh, send the questions in, and we'll see who who answers what. You know, the questions are: Who's the most handsome co-host? <laughs> oh, well, you got that hands down. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Who has the most attractive radio voice? Um, <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Let's just keep. Yeah, with that too. Jeez, mm. Jesus, we're getting kicked to the curb. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's right. Who has the worst schedule of everyone? So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> check. <laughs> Three in a row for me. When I'm not working, I'm sitting in this chair all day. It's it's funny because when we ask people what really annoys them about conventions or gaming, the floodgates open. So you get that topic that just people like to complain, I guess. I mean, I do too. But if you pick that topic and people aren't afraid to tell you what they think. And then other things like they just don't feel strongly enough about. Yeah, well, sometimes you don't you don't have somebody to unload that kind of stuff on. Yeah, you know, you you're willing to give them a forum to, to to bitch basically. You know, and who doesn't love a chance to do that? I know my wife doesn't want to hear me bitching. Mm. You know, even though she does get stuck listening to it sometimes. <laughs> we do love the feedback. That is true. Yeah, and so, we try to make it easy. I mean, you can email. There's so Facebook. thousand listeners out there that are only ten of you with feedback and. Step up, you know, take a swing. Give Jonathan something to, to go with. Because uh, tell him how much you want to hear about more Song of Blades and Heroes. <laughs> uh, we'll do a review on that. <laughs> it's my favorite game, so. No, you do well, love them. Well, there you go. Ganesha yeah. Games, right? Is, is What's some that? feedback for you? Ganesha? Is, yeah. Do the other people do it? Yep. So if you're listening, Ganesha, and you would like us to review the game, you should write in. They're the be oh. best games on the best games on the market for like eight dollars a PDF or something along those lines. They are fantastic, wow. fantastic. Hey, if you can have fun for that price, I'm in. Yep. Speaking of feedback, <laughs> we did get some feedback that I'd love to share with people. All right, so, what do you got? For our mailbag, which is my favorite segment of the show, people have taught, probably tired here me say that, but from Facebook, listener Gabe. I'm not tired of it yet, but I'm good. Oh, you will there. be, because I will say it every single episode, because <laughs> it's true every single episode. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, this is not feedback, but another show that we helped to spawn, the Hobby Desk Podcast down in Australia, which is done by our audio editor and show notes scribe, Joshua Shoebridge. Oh, I want to listen to that. It is so good. No, you, even better than that, tell him we want to be on the show. Have you offered to edit his audio? Quiet you. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he, he recently did, he's done a bunch of episodes for his season three, whatever he's on. 
And in one of them, he's like, so we have this new segment we're doing, and we're taking it from another show that we love, Wargaming Recon. And I'm listening because I love his show. And I was like, wait, what segment do we – like, we don't do segments. And I don't know where he's going. He's like, so we're doing Mailbag. And I was like, yeah, I love Mailbag. So I'm very <laughs> excited about that. Uh, I love to hear from people. Is what it, I love interacting with listeners. So yeah, I, I do too. I tease you, but I, I like to hear what people have to say too. It's the best part of doing a podcast because like people like radio, right? But you listen to whatever you listen to NPR, you listen to any radio station, whatever it is, right? Radio program or TV show or anything, and that's one way you you sit and you receive. But with podcasts, you listen, but then you get to interact. We're accessible. We we want to hear. So I I love when people do because I really get jazzed about it. And a lot of the times, people who write in, they really are part of the community. The people we get to know, whether physically in person or remotely through this, but form friendships with them. And it's amazing. It's just, that's, that's totally it because it's more than just a one way consumption of a product. Like it's totally about enjoying a community. And I mean, in the end, it, we're all playing games. Like we want to hear what people want to play. I like talking about what I like to play when I get to play them, <laughs> um, you know, but it, you know, it's basically friends hanging out doing a podcast about wargaming and we kind of expect the larger friend group to grow. Exactly. Yeah, I hope so. yeah. For me, one of the, the best examples of this, and this goes back many, many months ago, there was a guy who started leaving feedback uh, named Andrew and he started leaving feedback and then he started emailing me. So then we had these really intense email conversations, which led to us chatting online and getting to know each other more and more. And eventually he passed away and his mother wrote me to, to let me know that he had passed away because he was sending care packages here with things he thought might be of interest to talk about on the show and everything. And she's like, he had this ready. We found it when we found him and thought he would like you to have it. And that is why the show is dedicated to his memory and honor. And that would never have happened if he never started uh, leaving feedback. Yeah, that's just wow. amazing. I mean, just over over years, and so you never know. It, it, it's quite interesting, actually. Um, but that's why Mailbag is my favorite segment of the show, because it can change so many things for so many people. It can and change lives. We, we joke, but it's true. No, it is. It is. I know. We. It's It's fun to, to tease and to make jokes, like Mike said. But, I mean, in the end, like I just said, I mean, it's about making more friends and having a, a common interest and talking about it. That's what I love about this hobby anyway. You know, I mean, I, I don't think I realized it for years, but the best part of this hobby is the people that you meet. Yeah, I mean, Mike, I met you over the winter for the first time, but I felt like we had so much in common right away. You know what I mean? Like, it was just easy to yeah, just I do know what I mean. I, I feel to talk sad. about it and kick back and, and enjoy. Yeah, well, when you like the same things, you know, it just connects. Yep, yep. It feels weird because... We, we, I mean, we wouldn't be here, though. It's wargaming, but I've had people write in to say that the show's helped them through depression and all sorts of really terrible, dark things that like they've gotten through from listening to the show. And like I get those emails and yeah. that feedback, and I'm like, wow, because that's cool. That's we're really here. Cool. We're, well, we're talking about a game. I just posted a uh, something on the Barbarians that somebody had put up about gaming and depression, and. That that was this person's story in this article was you know gaming got her out of her depression. Mm -hmm. You do you hear yeah, a lot about yeah. that too, which is really 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 nice. I mean, yeah, I mean if you're gonna yeah. take drugs, this is it, man. You know, <laughs> it's as expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but the side effects aren't as bad. <laughs> that that is true. <laughs> so mailbag, <laughs> mailbag, and, and actually yeah, talking about mailbag. depression. I was trying to look it up. Um, Josh Shoebridge actually did an episode of us on here. Uh, he suffers from environmental uh, depression, and he was talking about how Wargaming helps oh. him through his depression. So we did oh, a whole okay. episode about it. Uh, oh. 2016, I think, sometime. I don't yeah, have the exact episode hmm. name. Um, here we go. Episode 162, Wargaming Against Depression with Joshua Shoebridge. So oh, we did it back good. in 2016. We talked about it. But Wow, there you go. Yeah, gaming is such a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's an eye-opener. Um but our most recent bit of feedback comes from Facebook from listener Gabriel, who talked about episode 187, the Maine Historical Wargamers Association episode. Uh, you'll have a link in the show notes. And he says, quote, I think that a sort of MC for Huzzah 
would help address a lot of the issues folks mentioned at the con. If there was more of a structured conversation between the Huzzah hosts and the participants, then perhaps it would come across as more engaging and structured, unquote. So Gabriel, thank you for the feedback. You've been sending us lots of feedback and we love it. And in case people haven't listened to that particular episode, what he's referencing is that in the episode we had uh, guest Joshua Johnson on, who's VP of the Maine Historical War Games Association. And we were just kind of talking in particular, I think, and I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but about the theme. Uh, and Mike, you were talking about how you don't care about themes for your game. Uh, but their theme, they had a really specific theme for Huzzah, and it was the frontier, the Afghan wars with the British colonial troops and all that kind of stuff. I and painted figures for them. You did. And that that are in Hanghai now. I didn't see any of the games, and we were talking about that. Like We didn't even know that it actually got followed through yeah. because all the attention was on a, a different game in a different setting, and just how people weren't aware of that. And um, In that episode, I talked about with Joshua, how at TotalCon, actually, they had a theme um, for 2017. It was like Wagons Go or something. It was Cowboys and stuff. Didn't even know it was a theme. We got there and was like, why is there all this Wild West stuff on right. their brochures and everything? We, we had no idea. And I like, mean, they I, mentioned it, but... I, I think I I, I, uh, I have to say that I, I like that they do a theme. It's just that I don't participate in it. I, I think it's really neat. And it's not required, which I think is no, really it's important. Not. I just I that's love cool. that they have a theme. You know, I, it's cool. It's just that, you know, I'm doing my thing, man. You no, know? absolutely. Um, but I, I think that's what Gabriel was responding to, that if they had like a right. central oh, person. By the way, before we go any, before we go any further, I'm nominating Gabriel as MC of Huzzah next year. I'm seconding that. Do we have a third, Alex? I, I'm thirding it. All right, it's it's a done deal. We're gonna have to talk to. Uh, Mike Trubeau, and see if we can get this thing taken care of. Uh, I just want to point out, too, that oh, Joshua. Uh, the beauty the beauty of Mailbag here, right? We were just talking about how cool Mailbag is, but this is not just a Mailbag comment for the show, but it pays it forward and can be useful to conventions down the line. You know, it's actual feedback for, you know, for somebody else to digest, not just the show. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. When, we do um, it for everybody. Yeah. Well, when we did the Huzzah episode and then we did this, there was one particular member who I'm not going to name, um, although they, they made the comment publicly, but one particular member of the MHWA board who was excited for the episodes because they wanted to know what they did wrong and what they can improve on, which I think is a really great attitude. Cause That's cool. Yeah. You know, conceptual criticism is where it's at. And I love that not only was that their attitude, but they really bought into this whole paid forward thing, which is, I mean, what, you, what are you talking about, Alex? This stuff isn't just like, oh yeah, we liked your show, we didn't like your show, or, or whatever. It's yeah, it's what's really awesome. And let's think globally. So you use the show as a lens, or like exactly, exactly. That's how where you're getting. That's their poll questions, essentially free poll questions. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it's great. And I love the we love the show comments and all that, which is great. Uh, but when you get something a little bit more that we can do with, like I've had feedback turn into actual episodes. Someone's been sure. like, here's my feedback. And then next thing I know, I'm like, do you know, there's more to this. We should do a whole whatever on it. And we've done in-depth whatever's about it and had guests and stuff from it. And I mean, it's cool. It leads to a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Plus, well, people I don't think there's any, doing. there's no end to the stuff we could talk about or the guests that you could have on. You know, I mean, it just, it can, it can go on forever. You, you're going to be busy for a long time, I think. Well, this is, we're recording early August, 2017. I'm already working on guests and content for the first half of 2018. <laughs> so yeah, well, there you go. It's awesome. It, I was talking with someone. I don't remember who. I feel bad about it. But I was talking with someone and saying that I kind of feel like I'm a time lord. Um, people don't know Doctor Who. Uh, and that my mind's kind of in 2018 for some scheduling. My mind's right now for what's going on now. And then my mind's like three months in the future because of the next batch of things that are coming along. And it's confusing sometimes to, to keep that all straight. But, yeah, you were trying to line me up for uh, for some the other podcast, and uh, I, I don't know what the hell I'm going to be doing. You know, <laughs> I mean, come on. I know that's the toughest part. You like Alex? I'm just trying to get all these conventions that I go to straight in my head. So, so when I tell the wife, I'm you know, I'm doing this or that, we you know, we can still have some weekends where we do things together too. You know. No, I mean that's one of the 
things that I love about the new way we're doing the show so that we're recording weeknights. It, it, it used to be weeknights were not different. They were verboten. But someone named Alex was like, hey, why don't you record during the weekend? I was like, no, I can't because I will wake up my two and a half year old. Yeah, you guys might have to finish this off, though, because it's getting it's bedtime for me. Well, right Millbag is also great because it signals near the end of the show. And um, but weeknights end up meaning I don't have yeah, any. But I, could, I could drag Mailbag into another half an hour. If you I could <laughs> if we allow you. Um, and so we get to do this during the week, which means we get more content and we get better stuff and actually a quicker turnaround for things. And um, and it was all me. Hey, it, it was you. I give as you Ma as credit. Maui says, you're welcome. <laughs> I love that movie so much. That's a great movie. It is fantastic. Highly recommend. Anyone who hasn't seen it, you should go see Moana. On Netflix now, no reason not to. We are uh, 2018. That's going to be our war gaming theme. Moana? Moana war game. Yep. Well, really? So what's that about? I, that's the first time I've heard of it. Po it's Polynesian. Polynesian based. We'll do Polynesian. It's, it's, a, it's a Disney princess movie, but it's non-traditional princess. Female empowerment, uh -huh. feminism, the story of why the Polynesian people had stopped exploring and then suddenly began exploring. It's brilliant. It's a great movie. It is a really good movie. Fantastic. Disney, Disney really these days. It's so, so good. Um, we have announcements, which is actually, I guess, another segment we do on the show. So you guys kind of alluded to it already, but there's a Wargaming Recon Facebook group, which we are still in the working out the naming of. Um, <laughs> but we got a link in the show notes, which are at wargamingrecon.com slash WR190. Show notes, and that'll have the link to that and other stuff we talked about. But the Facebook group is really cool so that listeners can hang out, right? You just chat about the hobby, chat about the show. We've had some really good discussions lately. Some people have shared pictures of minis, such as you, Alex. You've shared some stuff, which are really cool. And there's a poll I started that I think is a lot of fun, where people are voting for their favorite podcast guest so far this year. And I just I want to say I have not voted in it because I would skew the results because I love all our guests. And that's not just me covering my butt. It's legit. Like, I really I can't pick one because they're all amazing. But so far, either, so. We, we do have a winner so far. And I mean, it's ongoing, so people can take the poll, go to the group and whatever. But uh, Jasper's pulling out so far as uh, the, the lead horse in the race. Yeah, that was a fun one. And uh, so we'll see how that goes, at what people might do. We'll, and we'll add people, I guess, as we have more guests on or show topics. And um, it's, it's neat. I, you don't get anything for winning or anything, but it's just kind of fun to see. <laughs> well, maybe you should. Are you going to give them a prize, Mike? No, but you. How about you paint something? For paint something? a miniature. That's always the prize. <laughs> Come on, that's always the prize. Well, in that case, on, I think you can we'll do shut it. down the poll. I'll tell you what. If you group. paint one, I'll paint one. I will do something. You paint okay. one, I'll paint one. It, I will add oh, that. Oh, it's, it's a matching program now. It's like a that's match, right. Yeah, matching oh. painting four hundred one k. Yeah, it's like when you uh, do a charitable contribution and your corporation's yeah. listed yeah. and they match you. Um, <laughs> that's exactly for, what. For every miniature John paints. It'll be matched by one of us. It, it, right. It's That's great right. because you guys know you won't have to paint anything. So <laughs> Yeah, we won't have to do much. <laughs> um, and then Please. we have an update for everyone about the Roku channel. We've been talking about it a little bit. So it's not great news. According to the Nerd Broadcasting Network, which is a group that's putting it out, there's a delay. And it's because funding's been delayed. Uh, I can't really talk a lot about what that is. It's not terrible. Uh, but the plan is for the Roku channel to come out winter 2017 originally it was supposed to come out like early fall late summer but looking like winter so when we have more info we'll share that but i do have some good news because i know people really really want to see this uh, i just got word actually as of this morning <laughs> when we before we were recording today that the final cut for the documentary that i am in as a word a word and now a word from a gamer i should know the name and now a word from a gamer is uh, almost finished, complete, and they have plans to do the whole, um, you know, film circuit festival thing, and then they're going to do a premiere in Baltimore. They'll also show it at TotalCon, and then you'll be able to buy uh, Blu-rays and DVDs. They're going to get those made coming out, and then you'll be able to buy uh, digital copies via Amazon. So when that actually happens, uh, we'll have links and stuff to that so you can get that. And then you can see, I don't, I haven't seen it, so I, I don't know how much screen time I'm in. But Adrian's in it too, so that's kind of cool. I yeah, I, I definitely want to have a copy of that. 
be able to see it. Uh, yeah. I don't know what the price point is either, so don't ask. But oh, whatever. Affordable, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, it's not yeah. like buying a truck. No. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so that's good news. It is, it'll be cheaper it than is. a truck. Yes. Yeah, I would, I would figure, yeah. Yeah. And then cheaper I'll, than a tire. <laughs> but, oh, don't, don't talk to me about tires. Um, <laughs> we should thank our Wargaming Recon Army members, a.k.a. our Patreon backers. We've recently rebranded our Patreon campaign, and um, we are now calling, calling it the Wargaming Recon Army. Nice. That was also and done are, when I decided. Are we going to have yeah. rankings? We, we could. Are, are you oh, like the really five side cool. general? Well, we can tie rank names to um, the, the pledge levels. Yeah, pledge we, levels. Yeah. We oh, could do that. That's oh. awesome. So I want to thank oh. Patrick. Kyle from Vermont for uh, their support. And uh, speaking of the Wargaming Recon Army, aka our Patreon campaign, uh, we've had a little bit of a setback. We've lost some patronage there. So we were halfway to one goal, and then we've actually dropped down. So now we're $1 away from the previous goal that we had previously met, and we're hoping we can reach it. It's only $1 per month that we're away from. Oh, how, how did we lose them? Did we have it, a, a bad show? If you donate, you become the rank of modern major general. <laughs> wow. And can we just call him Major Tom? <laughs> Ground control. <laughs> the major Tom. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's uh, I think that that would be a, a very good idea. Yeah, uh, so we're ho I mean it, it's it's one dollar away and this goal is, allows us to buy better equipment. So as long as we meet that goal, we can keep buying better equipment. The last piece of equipment we bought, if you watch the video, you see it's right here. It's a blue Yeti mic. Really, really good. Allows us to do a lot of stuff in person. We did it for the Havoc episode. We mm -hmm. used to do whatever. Uh, we still need to get some more accessories for it and things and some other equipment for this and for other things we're doing. So hopefully we can soon reach that goal uh, yet again. It's only $1 away. And uh, you can support the show and become a member of the Wargaming Recon Army by going to wargamingrecon.com slash Patreon. And it costs as little as $1 a month. You'll get episodes before non- Wargaming Recon Army members will get uh, extra content, and for example, you become a member, you get access to that video I mentioned where you see me assemble some travel battle stuff. So if, if we get enough members in the army, maybe we can put together a press game. Hey, there you go. Yeah. It's a good way to do it, so you guys can check <laughs> that out. And then you can also... Of course, check out the show notes, wargamingrecon.com slash WR190, and you can get links to all the things that we've talked about and all that kind of stuff. So do we have anything else we want to discuss before we wind down for the episode? I'm sure I can think of a bunch of things, but i got to go to bed. <laughs> you got to get up <laughs> at like 4 in the morning. 3.30. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's early. I'll be on the road by 4. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, Wow. Ouch. Yeah, what, uh, where where are you driving to? Natick. Oh, wow. That is... Wow. Math, math works in Natick. Wow. Up the road for me. Sorry, man. Yeah, I know, huh? Yeah. That's all right. Hey, don't be sorry. I'm getting paid. Getting paid um, is good. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it to the, uh, the question of when are we uh, going to put our characters together for our D&D &D game? So, I believe... That the last discussion on that was a matter of yeah I know you needed to come up with a date yeah and we would make it work yeah okay <laughs> and I think <laughs> the last thing you said was oh okay uh, I'll look into that <laughs> well if we're gonna do it you have to bring the mic and we'll record our ca our character creation and it can be uh, Patreon content oh we can do a video yeah we can do a video either way sure or both whatever. Hey, yeah, I'm all yeah. in favor of that. We get the webcam all right. and stuff we can do. All right. Oh, I'll get that, back to you on that. Oh, that sounds like a yes. Listeners, you heard it here <laughs> first. That sounds like a yes for some role playing. I'm, on, I'm on air for this. You are on air for oh, it. Boy. Going out live. Here we go. going to be hard to get out of this now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I know. I put myself on the hook for that. Yeah, you did. You can. I got to go to bed. Good night. <laughs> Oh, did I? Think no, that wasn't me. Yeah, I gotta get up at like two in the morning or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm hanging up on you guys anytime now. So, well, all right, I'll let, I'll let John wrap it up. I want to thank yeah, both right. of you 
for being on this episode and for talking about OGC and all the cool stuff that we've been doing. And I got to say, Alex, it's been way too long since you've been on, so we're going to make you come on more frequently. I like it. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank yes. you for I, I, Mike, I think he only comes on when you're on because he won't come on when it's just me or someone else. So. Well, good. I, I like when he comes on. It's so that's true. true. It's the thing. <laughs> it is crack, true. You crack the code. There we go. I figured it out. It's like a Konami code. Yep. Up, up, down, down. B A B A B A start. Um, or two players select start. So, anyway, thank you for that. And I want to thank all of you listeners for taking the time out of your very busy schedules to listen to this episode of Wargaming Recon. And I want to remind you that the next episode, episode 191, it's crazy. I can't believe we're almost up to 200. But 191 comes out September 4th, 2017. And that one is going to be a really cool episode. They're all really cool episodes, right? But that one's going to be really cool because it's going to be about a really fun event. Uh, and that is the Hobby Bunker Game Day 2017. So that's September. And then right after that, September 18th, is the Sam Mustafa interview, which I'm really looking forward to. And we got every single, we get the rest of the year planned out. So you can find that out at the episode guide which can get you by going to the show notes, wargamingrecon.com slash WR190, and that'll give you all of that. So thank you yet again, and as always, you know the drill. No matter how busy you are, no matter how much time you are spending at the open gaming convention or harassing me about my painting, you know that you have to, you gotta, you need to keep on gaming. <laughs>